Hello again. Yeah, I know, I know. Suddenly my face has less hair on it and get used to it. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Mustafa Gharib and today we're going to be rambling about uh, some more shit that I care about. Okay, so last time we talked about Linux and today I just want to, you know, change things out around because practically my last two popular videos were about computer stuff. Then again, I'm still going to be talking about computer stuff. I'm actually, this time I'm going to be talking more about games. And as you get already from the title, the question today is going to be, why are simulation games? Good question, person I just made up who asked this question. Um, I don't know. I don't know why they exist. But then again, there were, you know, theories about why they exist and why, why people play them, really. I once told a friend of mine I was, you know, kind of stoked to play another simulator game called Car Mechanic Simulator. That literally asked me, do you want to be a car mechanic? Do you want to fix cars? Actually, that's not a bad question. Do we play simulator games because we want to live a life like that? My theory about this is that we don't actually play simulator games because we want to be the things we do in these games. It's more that we save ourselves the hassle of doing these things professionally, if it's a job-based game, so that we can have fun with them while not being committed to them. It's fun without the commitment. I guess that's the premise of simulator games. So to answer my friend's question, no, I don't want to be a car mechanic, but I would love it if there was a fun way to simulate the feeling and the, you know, simulate the work of a car mechanic, which is nice. I guess it's, uh, it's pretty nice. It's, uh, it's weird how the simulation genre has grown. There's a lot of weird stuff and people have already like coined the term walking simulator for any game where most of what you do is walk. Like, yeah, for example, I guess the uh, one game that comes to mind is The First Tree, which is a fox walking simulator. Even in the description of the game, it said, this is not a fox simulator. Yeah, it's not a fox simulator, but it's a fox walking simulator. Most of what you do in this game is walk and it's all over the place. I'll get to that in another review in another video, I think, because I was kind of planning on doing that really early. I actually finished that game. It's pretty nice, but all in all, where's the plot? I, I feel like the plot is all over the place. Uh, moving on to... Uh, uh, what simulator games are, you've probably heard a lot of weird stuff about simulator games. There's Bum Simulator, where you simulate a homeless man in the street. There's Euro Truck Simulator and American Truck Simulator, two very successful simulators of truck driving. Pretty great stuff. So there's always the good, the bad, and the ugly. In, in terms of ugly, there's Grass Simulator. You want to simulate grass? You want to simulate the feeling of a patch of grass on the floor, on the ground, on 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 the dirt, on dirt. Like, do you want to simulate the feeling of being alone, grass in the ground? Like looking at the sky. Yeah, that's literally what grass simulator is. And there's rock simulator where you don't simulate rock music. No, you simulate the life of an actual rock. I guess that's what I assumed from looking at the screenshots of the games. What a time to be alive. There's the good, there's the bad, and there's the ugly. Today we're going to be talking about three good games and two bad games. We're not gonna get into the, into the ugly because I don't play ugly games. I, sorry, I don't play them, I don't buy them. That's that's a, a, the, the rule I go by. I don't buy ugly games. Unless I'm willing to experiment with them. If I'm like really, if I, if I got too much money on my hands, which is never the case. So yeah, let's um, let's review the three good games, three good simulator games that I think are worth mentioning. It's a great game. I love it. I it's my third most played game on Steam. The premise of this game, again, simulators are so straight to the point with a little bit of detail put in if they're good. In PC building simulator, when you play free build, you are allowed all the kinds of cases and all the kinds of PC components and you just cram them up into something that you think is art. It's like, I guess uh, someone referred to it as it's PC porn, but without the uh, financial crisis. I guess that's uh, that's what they said. I'm not sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it again. Maybe again. No, I Forget it. Forget I said anything. So yeah, PC building simulator. When you play the uh, when you play the uh, free build mode, is simply just you know creating your own stuff. But when you play the career mode, basically you're working at some uh, uh, office. Uh, in the game, you take charge of a shop that belonged to your uncle, and then you make something of it. And you know it becomes really successful once you get into the career and just work instead of your uncle. And then and one by one, you have a bigger share of the shop, and it becomes eventually yours. There are pre periods of time where you have to you know 
will pay a certain amount of money to be more of a shareholder for the shop. So yeah, and Uncle Tim is pretty greedy. He asks for really ridiculous amounts of money that, hey, I'm doing a lot of jobs here. There's a lot of like work here and I need to do. It's not a, It's not even enough to pay for my own PC upgrades. It's annoying. And uh, that's, that's in the game. That just so we're clear, that's in the game. And uh, as you progress, the jobs get more uh, weird, actually. There are more, there are some jobs with a storyline behind them. The same people who send you, the same virtual people who send you these PCs appear once, more than once, more than like several times throughout the game. And it becomes some sort of like, it's not just a normal simulator game where you just fix computers. It's a game with a little bit of story behind it that it's based on faceless people. You don't know what they look like. Of course, there's concept art to explain these people later. But then again, you look at these people, uh, you look at these emails, and you just you have you have so much infatuation with them that you want to help these people, and you know you're you're there to be part of their success story. One of them is an esports uh, gamer who had a really shitty PC and wanted to build something cheap so that he could you know play in, in an esports league and whatnot. And then you see him progressing and getting better. It's one of the most intricate simulators I've ever seen. It's the kind of simulator that first is very colorful very fun if you want if you like to build pcs uh and second it's immersive in a really good way that they have they even recently added an expansion to work in it so instead of like the setting where you own a pc building uh, shop you're in a shop that actually where you actually work as an it agent or like it uh technician for some company that, that that's that's the least i can remember you work for a, an, an it for a company and then people from your company come over to send you their computers to get fixed if they need to be fixed and whatnot it's fun it's they actually really uh, at that point they implemented the tablets to, to make things easier i don't know why they didn't why they didn't do that with the uh, normal career mode and then there's the esports expansion which i didn't get to but it has mixed reviews on steam so i'm not sure overall i like B pc building simulator it's actually my top favorite simulator of all time if we're going to speak in terms of what simulators I like. Uh, to be honest, I want an overhaul to the graphics. I think even on ultra mode, there has to be a little bit, you know, oomph with the graphics. I think this is too, these graphics are too simple for, you know, PC building. I, I, I love this game, I, what can I say? They're pretty much the same game, except with American Truck Simulator, you ride trucks with a little bit of nozzle. I guess that's pretty much it. That's the difference between these two. But then again, these games are so fun. They kill time really well to the point where you could like sit for hours doing a job going from place to another delivering stuff making sure this stuff doesn't break in the middle or that you don't get in the car accident that ruins your entire delivery this has happened to me several times while playing this game for the first time i didn't know what to do i was so used to running with the cars because i play need for speed a lot but then again the truck simulators allow you to like not allow you but the main rule is drive really carefully and get there on time it's not as intricate as you know a lot of really good simulators it has a really simple goal deliver something from one place to another try not to break it try not to get in into an accident obey the traffic laws and get there on time park the truck if you want to pro park it uh, in a really difficult way you get more xp if you want to just not do anything just have it auto park you get no xp if you want to park it but the easy way you get a little bit of xp it's, it's pretty nice and then the premise is that when you, once you do that you rack up money for your own freight company to you know transport stuff on your own without having to do jobs for other companies this kind of game the truck sim uh, uh genre in general like not the the truck sim you know duology is pretty good actually american Th truck simulator came like four years after your truck simulator i think i don't know and then i think like nobody like really pointed out the difference because both games were really superb they were really fun it's not that they were over the top amazing it's not about the graphics it's about how fun the game is and this game but does that real well what it, what annoys me really is the dlcs when certain areas in the game like let's say you're still making a dlc for russia in uh, your truck simulator they've already made the dlcs for scandinavia eastern uh, europe uh, the baltic sea all of that stuff which i think is interesting if you want if you want to add these to your arsenal then go ahead like have them on discount try to have them on discount i guess the most expensive of them currently when when in discount is iberia that which is why i'm not i'm not touching that dlc in particular until i get the first few i mean i got the one with turkey i got the one with you know i got a lot of stuff from the dlcs which i think is fun i like it it's just that why do you have to keep some countries as dlc there's a full dlc for france a full dlc for italy what's up with that you have to wait 
for a part of the map, which exists in real life, to come out as DLC and then you can buy it. I really don't understand the premise of DLC in this one, other than that, of course, they want to get paid, they want to get more money, it's fine. I I don't, I don't care. I don't care. In American Truck Simulator, you have some states as DLC. You have all of left... Uh, all left, really. I, the, the, the four cardinal directions, left, right. Instead of north, south, you get what I mean. So uh, you, you, all you have at, the point, at that point is the western states, and the, the eastern states just don't appear as playable, because uh, it's, uh, slowly but surely they're gonna... To sum this part up, I like the game a lot. I like both games. Of course, let's just stop at your Truck Simulator 2. This game has been on for 2012 and it's still, you know, being serviced to this day. You don't have to do a Euro Truck Simulator 3 at this, at this point. It's gonna, it's gonna be great if you just keep on building on this one game and just keep it alive for as long as you can. It's already pretty good. You don't have to do an overhaul to the graphics. It's pretty much what you need. But in case of, uh, yeah, that, that applies to both American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator 2. They're pretty good games and pretty stoked to see what new DLC would come out, even though I I hate having to pay for new countries in games like this. Why, why? Why would you do that? But then again, really good games. Okay, so the third uh, good uh, simulator on our list is House Flipper. It's a simulator where you grab houses and you flip them. That's lame. That's really lame. Yeah, so House Flipper is a game where you work as some sort of, you know, someone who flips houses from being completely looking ugly, looking gnarly, looking like a pigsty to houses that look really good. You have to clean things up. You have to dispose of trash. You have to sometimes paint walls. You have to uh, clean windows. Not that kind of window. Not the kind of windows we were talk talking about last time. It, it's the actual, like, actual windows, like this one. So yeah, it's a pretty straightforward game. I, I only played like two hours of it. I lost my save once, so I played all over again from the start and did some more jobs. It's kind of a, a good game for those who are neat freaks in a way, like uh, people who enjoy cleaning up stuff. It, it's really relaxing when you clean up. I guess that's why some people really enjoy cleaning up. There's the satisfaction of cleaning up your room, a floor. This is the aesthetic of the game, is that clean things look better. Not much to say about this game really, it's just you work as someone who uh, fixes houses. Like there, there's the, you know, sometimes you have to place some radiators where radiators need to be put, uh, just uh, buy furniture if uh, the house requires a certain kind of furniture in a certain room. And then you also have your own uh, cabin, which you live in, if you want to make it better, uh, you can actually build walls and make it a bigger uh, house. Actually, your cabin actually starts off really dirty at first, but then when you clean it up and, and actually renovate it in the way that makes you happy with the revenue that you get from your jobs, it's, uh, it's a pretty satisfying thing overall. You clean up other people's houses, but your own house also needs taken care of, and it's generally really, really enjoyable to do that. Car Mechanic Simulator 2014. I'm going to talk about specifically 2014 because I just don't understand what this game is. It's pretty straightforward at first telling you that there are parts of the car that need to be fixed. Pretty easy overall, but then again after that, if you don't have the sufficient car knowledge, you will never be able to guess what part of the car is broken. I don't know if someone who actually worked on a car before will be able to play a game like this, but it's, it sounds so much like a, some sort of mystery puzzle game where you have to figure out everything in the game where you have to figure out every single broken car part on your own without the game really even hinting at what needs to be worked on. Sometimes it hints to a specific part of the car that needs to be worked on. But then again, you do an, you have to do your an, an actual diagnosis for yourself. And what comes out next is that you uh, the car the car parts are marked as red and yellow and green based on their state, based on the health of these parts of the car. But then again, you get to the part where, okay, you're working on a car, but you have to disassemble parts of the car to see the parts underneath and see if, they, if they're actually broken or not. That is, if you're not ac using the actual community guide that tells you what ne you need to do. It doesn't require any creativity, it just, the solutions are always there if you feel lost. And you feel lost all the time. I mean, uh, personally, I felt lost throughout the entire game. When you buy stuff on the store in this game, you can't resell it. There's used car parts 
shop where you buy secondhand equipment for your car then again if these are used and not in the in 100 condition then why can't i sell mine as well your inventory ends up being a huge pile of junk that is at one per one percent health a lot of things in this game weren't taking into consideration the reward at the end like the last level of the game where you're rewarded with some sort of you know really according to the game amazing car uh to test drive that's what i did all of these jobs for that felt like inadequate compensation i felt like i felt like i was wasting my time with that game and i feel like it, it needed a little bit more work that's not what i expected from this game at all i generally enjoy simulators i like to buy simulators just for the sake of trying out new simulators i'm a i'm a sim game fan Oh, what can I say? But when it comes to this game, I didn't feel enriched at all. I felt like it was tedious on a very dangerous level of tedium. I hope if I try Car Mechanic Simulator 2015, which I actually own with all the DLC, I hope it's going to be a bit more, a bit better of an experience than Car, Simula car Mechanic Simulator 2014. Overall, if you want to get into the Car Mechanic Simulator genre, just skip to 2015. Okay, so this game was free at, at some point on the Steam store, and I thought, well, let's just grab it, see what it's like, let's see what it's, how it plays. So Totally Accurate Battle Simulator actually does better than this, you know, game. Imagine a parody of your game functioning better than your own game. Like, yeah, I, th I, think, I think the other one was a pretty good game already. Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator is, like, really behind on what needs to be done for a battle simulator. Like, yeah, I, I get it. It's uh, the premise of uh, simulating battles, like watching the battles be simulated. It's interesting. But the, then again, the maps are too vast for the amount of units that your GPU can handle at one point. Why do that to yourself? And then again, you can actually control the characters in the game, but you end up feeling like, what, uh, what I, I can't, like, this doesn't feel like CSGO or something, or any kind of shooter game if you're using a, mo a modern army or feels like uh, Skyrim even if you're going to use a, a medieval unit with a sword or an arrow, an arrow or whatever it, it doesn't feel good to simulate the characters themselves like walk in the shoes of the actual characters and it, even then like what what's the what what's next with the game you're gonna keep watching um you're gonna keep watching battles that's all you're gonna do with the game it gets really boring really easily and then there's the zombies mode yeah, imagine that a battle simulator has a zombie mode in the game. Why? Why? Why would? Why? Why? And then when you try to play the zombie mode, it's just uh, you with a team of seven soldiers who are fending off a uh, zombie invasion in a maze because they, they come out as as if they were in a maze and you're in the middle of the maze and they're coming to you. They're coming after you. You play as one of the soldiers. You keep shooting. What's next? Okay, so Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator, try to say that ten times fast, makes you want to, allows you to play a shooter mode in the simulator what this is the this is a zombies game a zombies mode this is not even original holy shit this is not original at all so yeah uh overall like to sum up why i don't like ultimate battle epic <laughs> I don't think the Totally Accurate Battle Simulator hasn't already done this way better than Ultimate Battle Epic Battle Simulator. They're trying to do an Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 2. You're doing a sequel for a game that wasn't even the... Like, what? Of course, I guess the memers, the people who like to make memes, enjoyed this game and gave it a lot of good reviews on Steam just because it's a literal meme. This is a meme game. I... I wish it was at some point more than just a meme game i guess that's why they made it free because they are they themselves realized i think they just themselves realized oh well it's it's not like this game is like really productive as a game we just feel like it would make sense more as a meme game so i'll just give it to people for free and work on uh U uebs too uh, pardon yeah, I think if you want to get an actual working battle simulator, even if it looks goofy, just get totally accurate battle simulator. It's already doing way better than this shit. So what have we learned today? We, today we learned that simulation in general is a very fun thing if done correctly. The simulation genre is generally full of really underrated gems, uh, but then again, you have to pick which ones to play because I think Playway is getting really lazy with its choice of games to release. You think of something, oh yeah, let's make a simulator for that. No, you have to like really go into what you're simulating. It's just not as simple as that. PC Building Simulator knew what needed to be done. They understood the assignment and made it not just a simulator, it's an immersive experience for those who like and enjoy building PCs. What House Flipper does may not be anything beyond simply, you know, cleaning houses, but it has the 
perk of being a game that is really satisfying to go through. What CMS 2014 and U UEBS do is not really, for, at least for me, it's not really the best definition of a simulator. These games are some of the games that exactly are the reason why people think the simulation genre is ridiculous and why and why it, it, it evolved into stuff like rock simulator and gas grass simulator. Of course, that would be gas simulator. I mean. <laughs> The sky's the limit with this shit. There's still hope for the simulation genre to be full of games that are enjoyable, that games that are fruitful, that make you learn, that make you enjoy your time, that make that satisfy you. Try not to pick the ones from Playway, because these are, you know, you don't need that in your life. Thank you for watching. If you like this, uh, please go ahead and like the video. If you actually like want to see more content from yeah, from this channel, just go ahead and subscribe because one subscribe equals one virtual PC that I will be making on PC Building Simulator and sending to one of you. Again, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.